All right, what we're going to look at today is apostrophes. Apostrophes are an important issue in grammar, uh, and um, one of the problems that happens is a lot of people seem to think uh, that you want to put a lot of apostrophes in. Uh, everywhere you have a word that ends in S, doesn't that mean there has to be an apostrophe somewhere? Uh, and that is not the case. Uh, basically, when you're using an apostrophe, there are two situations where you normally will use an apostrophe, and any other situation, you probably don't. So we're looking at apostrophes. Uh, the first situation where you do use apostrophes is if you have a contraction. And a contraction basically means something has been left out. You've shortened it in some way. So when you're looking at a contraction, the apostrophe very simply just shows where something is left out. So that's the principle. It's very, very simple. If you've condensed something, left some letters out, uh, you're going to use an apostrophe to show that's where things have been left out. So in this particular case, uh, say you wanted to say did not, and you want to condense it, uh, you'll say didn't, D-I-D, in apostrophe T. And so what that means is this apostrophe here is showing where that O has been left out. Uh, it's actually not where the words got put together. Uh, it's where the words or letters are left out. Uh, sometimes it coincidentally happens that the apostrophe is where the words got put together. But really what you want to look at is where something was left out. Uh, another example, if you want to say you are, that will condense <coughs> into Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. And so this case, uh, the apostrophe is showing that A has been left out. So that's the rule for uh, contractions. And by the way, this works for numbers too. Uh, if you're talking about the year and you want to talk about the year 2016, uh, you will do that with an apostrophe 16. So the apostrophe now is showing those two digits. The first two digits are left out. So um, I see it all the time where people try to put the apostrophe after. Uh, what that means, if you have an apostrophe after a number, that's the symbol for feet. So if you're talking about uh, 16 with the apostrophe after, you'd be saying 16 feet instead of the year. So that's contractions. So that's a very, very simple rule. If you just remember where something is left out, that's where you put the apostrophe. Now, the other situation where you typically may use an apostrophe is possessives. And in possessives, what you're doing is showing that something belongs to something else. So you may be saying for, um, and I'm going to, this is going to sound abstract at first, but it'll come clear in a moment. Uh, so you have something belongs to Or you may be able to phrase it as of whatever that blank is. Now that blank is going to be the noun that you're going to form into a possessive. Now, some grammar books make this really complicated. What I do instead is I try to keep it very, very simple. So if you're going to be forming the possessive of this word, uh, you only have to ask yourself one thing about it. And that one thing is, does it end in S. That's the only question you need to know. You don't need to know whether it's plural or singular. You don't need to know anything else about it except does it end in S. And if it does not end in S, you're going to add apostrophe S. Now, if it does end in S,
all you need to add is just the apostrophe. And this, as I said, it's very, very simple. Uh, you don't have to worry anything about whether it's singular or plural. Now, some grammar books do make this more complicated. Uh, some grammar books will say, okay, if it's a person's name that ends in S, uh, you add the apostrophe S if it changes the pronunciation, and you, uh, or uh, unless it's somebody famous like Moses or Jesus, and then you don't have to do that, um, or if it's the second Tuesday of the month, or all of that. Some grammar books make this really complicated. Uh, but really, for uh, practical purposes, you don't need to worry about all that other stuff. Just worry about whether it ends in S. Uh, so, for example, if we are talking about a restroom that belongs to woman, women. Now what we're saying is the restroom of women. Notice that it is plural, but we don't worry about whether it's plural. We worry about whether it ends in S. Since this does not end in S, this will be a women's restroom with the apostrophe s at the end. So even though it's plural, you don't have to put, uh, you don't put just the apostrophe and you don't put the apostrophe after the s. Now, if you're in a more upscale establishment and the restroom belongs to ladies, in this case, this already ends in s. So we will say it's the ladies with the apostrophe at the end, restroom. And this is something I see a lot of times, especially in newspaper ads, uh, clothing ads in particular. I'll see ads for ladies' clothing, L-A-D-I-E apostrophe S. What that would mean is that it's a restroom of lady, L-A-D-I-E, uh, which isn't even a real word. So this is one of the things to, to look at. Don't worry about anything else. Just look at what you have. Does it end in S? Uh, and formulate your possessive accordingly.